What is going on guys, Nick here, back with another video, and today we're doing a DaVinci Resolve tutorial. We're gonna show you how to do this. So sit back, relax, grab a coffee. This is one of those no frills tutorial, you know, we're gonna cut the crap, just show you exactly how to do it. So let's roll the intro and jump right into DaVinci Resolve. Okay guys, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve. All I've done is brought a little bit of footage here of a uh, tree, uh, slight color grade on it, nothing too special, just something so we can put our text over. This is just a standard 1080p, 24 frames a second timeline. So the first thing we're gonna do is up here in our media pool, we're gonna right click and we're gonna create a new fusion composition. There are multiple ways you can do it. I just like to do it this way to keep it nice and simple. And we're just gonna call this our text reveal, whatever, call it whatever you want. Now we have our text reveal and I'm gonna drag it on top like so and extend it to sort of how long I want the text to sort of go. Now, as you can see, as I drag the playhead over, it goes completely black. And that's because it recognizes that there is a fusion composition on top of the video file, but there is nothing currently in the composition. So it just, it's outputting a blank screen and because it's on top, that's all we see. So the first thing we need to do is with the fusion comp selected, we're gonna go over to the fusion tab. Great, and as you can see here, we're in Fusion, and like I said, all we have is one media out node, nothing else. We need to plug everything we want to into there to get our desired result. So for now, I'm gonna close the keyframe uh, window away, and we are going to create a text node. Now, there are multiple ways you can do it. I like to just click it from there, or you can obviously control, shift, spacebar, or command, shift, spacebar, and type in text. And with that selected, we're just going to drag it into the media out, so that we can have some text. So for this one, like in the demo, we're just gonna type vlog, and then we're gonna change the font to something a little bit more playful. I like to use a font called Atmosphere. It's very, you know, sort of travel vloggy sort of appearance. And we're just gonna bump the size up like so, keep it nice and big. And you can see there, it's nice hand sort of painted font. And if we go back to our default page, you can see now we have vlog written there. So the next step is to animate it. And to animate it, we use masks, which hopefully if you're following along, you should have sort of guessed that that's how we would do it. So with the text node selected, we're gonna go Command Shift Space, Control Shift Space on a PC. We're gonna type in mask. And what we want is mask paint, right? Because we're gonna hand draw this mask onto the text. And we're gonna click it and go add. And now we can't see anything. Why is that? And that's because the mask is covering the whole text and we need to figure that out. So the first option we need to do is change the sort of painting mode that we're going to be doing. So currently, as you can see up here, the mask paint tool is select to the multi-stroke, which is not what we want for this tutorial. What we want is the single stroke. So we're gonna click on that. And again, you still see nothing. That's because we need to fiddle with some settings. So over in the inspector, we have our mask paint tool selected. We need to go to our mask options here. We're gonna click on that. We're just gonna invert the mask. And this is purely just so we can see what we're doing, all right? It is not impertinent to what we're doing, but we wanna be able to see what we're working on. So we're gonna click invert. And obviously now we see everything because the mask isn't covering anything. Now we're gonna go back to the controls for the mask paint. And we're gonna change some things. So we're gonna start from top to bottom. The first thing we need to change is the brush controls. As you can see, indicated here by that little green circle, that is the size of our brush. And if I were to click and drag, it is not big enough to cover that entire letter. So the first thing we need to do is go back to the brush control, bump up the size of that brush quite a bit until, until we have a pretty good cover. And I reckon that's a pretty good size. Another thing we need to do is lower the softness because even now, if I click and drag, you can see it fades it a little bit. That's fine, we just drop the softness right down to zero. So we're gonna get a nice clean mask, cover up each individual letter perfectly. Now we're gonna scroll down. We've got one more setting, which is the stroke control. Now this controls how the stroke or the mask that we're gonna create behaves in terms of animating. So like we have here, stroke animation, we have all frames. What we need to change is change it to right on, which is the effect that we are trying to achieve here in this video. Like I said, this is a no frills, no sort of crap tutorial. We're just gonna show you exactly how to do it. There are obviously heaps of options available in Fusion. I'll let you guys sort them out in your own time. I'm just showing you what you need to know. 
Now with the stroke animation set to right on, we got our brush size set up. All we need to do is cover the entire writing with the mask. Now there are a few different ways we can do that. We could do it each individual letter and have separate animations for each one. But what I like to do is cover the whole word in one continuous movement. Can be a little bit tricky with a mouse or a touchpad, better if you have like a wake on tablet, but I find that the animation ends up being a little bit more fluid, a little bit more natural, because let's be honest, if this, if this is what you had handwritten, normally you would have written that in one full stroke. So we're gonna go to frame zero, because we wanna start the animation right at the start of the clip. And literally this is all we do is we click and we're gonna drag the mask and create something, you know, that resembles sort of like a hand drawn animation. And we're done. And as you can see here, it's added all these white dots, which are keyframes, to the animation. If I drag through, you can see that the text slowly disappears, all right? But that's the opposite of what we want. The reason it disappears is because hopefully, if you were smart enough and had been playing along, we inverted the mask at the start. So we're gonna go back over to the mask controls in the mask paint tools in the inspector, whoo, and uncheck invert. All right, now everything is covered and effectively we are painting the mask on and now we have our animation. But if I was to click play, so go back to start and press spacebar, even though it's not playing back at full speed, this is quite a slow write on effect and I don't know how many people would sit through. So we need to shorten up, tighten up that animation. So with the mask paint selected, we're gonna bring up our keyframes. We're going to drop the mask paint down, stroke, we've got the stroke one here, which is the first one we made. We can't see anything. I'm not sure why the keyframe window does this. It does definitely like to, you know, be weird. But if you just hit the plus button on your keyboard, it's going to zoom in. Obviously minus zooms out and you just zoom in till you can see all of your keyframe, which are all these little white marks there. They're all your keyframes that it's made for the mask. What we need to do is, as you can see here, it's actually extending the length of the clip. The length of the clip is 128 frames long. It's going up to maybe 215. So we're gonna box select every single one of them. Now they're all yellow. We're going to right click, go time stretching. What this is gonna do is surround it in this nice little box. And it's so easy because now we can just drag them and we can make it nice and short. And as you can see here in the timeline, we get a real representation of how long it goes for. And we can play this back and figure out how long we want it for. For this sort of animation, I find a second and a half seems to be a pretty good speed. So a second is about here, 25 frames. So we sort of want it to be around the 35 frames mark, sort of. So I'm gonna keep shrinking it until we are there. Now that we have that done, we can right click on the keyframes and disable the time stretching. And if we play this back, it's much, much faster. But what I don't like is that it's actually at the start here of the uh, clip. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna click and drag, select all the keyframes and I'm going to just drag them to the middle of our fusion composition. So now we have sort of like a little bit of a delay before it starts and then it draws on like so, and then it continues on. Now, obviously in real time, this does look smoother. We are recording the screen at the moment and Fusion is resource intensive. So, you know, get on my page guys. Best part about this though, Fusion, we just go back to the edit page and bam, it is done straight there. If I hit play, yes, it's going to be a little bit slow, but it writes on just like so, and we're just gonna let that buffer out. And that is the effect done right there they didn't have to jump into a separate program. We did it all within DaVinci Resolve and it was super quick and easy to do. Hopefully you guys followed along and you found something new in this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, hit a thumbs up button down below. Reach out in the comments as well. See, you know, let us know what other tutorials you guys are looking for. Until the next video, guys. See ya.